How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and I'm a nutritionist and nutrition researcher and today we're going to be talking all about ketosis. What is it? How do you do it? What can it do? And what doesn't it do? So provided you haven't been living under a rock or a loaf of bread for the past 20 years, there's a good chance that you've heard about a keto diet or at least you've heard about the many different types of keto products, keto guides, keto recipe books, keto books themselves. It's kind of a big deal. But just like anything in nutrition, there is a huge amount of misinformation about keto diets out there. So hopefully in today's video, we're gonna dispel any of those myths that you might've heard. First off, what does a keto diet even mean? Well, keto is short for ketogenic, and a ketogenic diet is a diet that causes your body to generate or make ketones. You see, one of the main fuels of our body is glucose, a carbohydrate, and a healthy person is able to maintain their blood glucose levels really, really well, because that helps our body to supply all of our systems, all of our muscles, our brain, our organs with glucose the fuel that they need. If our glucose levels drop too low, our body can just get more glucose from our muscles where we store glycogen, or it can also make glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. So it can actually use amino acids or fats to make glucose, and that's called gluconeogenesis. The problem with gluconeogenesis is it takes a lot of energy to make that glucose. But if you don't eat carbohydrates, your body is missing one of its major fuel sources. So your body tries to make an alternative fuel and that alternative fuel is ketones. When your blood ketone levels get high enough, then somebody is officially in ketosis. Hence the name, a ketogenic diet. Now, at this point, it's really important to say that ketosis and ketoacidosis are not the same thing. You see, ketoacidosis is a very, very serious condition that can happen to some people who have type one diabetes. And it happens when their blood sugar gets too high, they start to produce a lot of ketones, their blood starts to become acidic, they can pass out, and they can even die. But that is definitely not the same thing as ketosis. They are very, very different. And ketosis is perfectly safe. Ketoacidosis is not. So, how does somebody get into ketosis? Well, one of the easiest ways to do it is to reduce the amount of carbs that you eat. And a lot of guides recommend that you eat fewer than 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrates. So where do you get carbohydrates? Well, think of all the foods that you love. Pasta, rice, potatoes, crisps, um, cake, sweets, chocolate. If it's absolutely delicious, there's a really, really good chance that it contains carbohydrates. Just to give you a little bit of context, one single medium banana can contain as many as 27 grams of carbs. So that means just eating two bananas is enough to put somebody out of ketosis. So if you can't eat carbs, what can you eat on a ketogenic diet? Well, funnily enough, there is actually a wide variety of foods that you can eat and enjoy on a ketogenic diet. Foods like meat, eggs, fish, some uh, high fat dairy products like cheese are virtually free of carbohydrates and make up the majority of many ketogenic diets. But on top of that, you can also eat a huge amount of low carbohydrate fruit and vegetables, low sugar fruit like berries, and then non-starchy vegetables or salad vegetables, things like spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, a lot of other salad vegetables are quite low in carbs. And you can eat those along with things like nuts on a ketogenic diet in moderation. Think of it like this. If you normally grab a burger and chips for lunch, to make it keto, you need to remove the bun from the burger, and then you need to replace the chips with a salad. That doesn't sound as appetizing, but it is quite a healthy meal. You've got some meat and some vegetables. So why would somebody even want to do a keto diet? Well, the, for the majority of people, they do it for fat loss. The thing is, when somebody makes ketones, you make them from fatty acids, from fats in your body. So that leads a lot of people to automatically assume that if somebody is on a ketogenic diet or somebody is in ketosis, they are burning a lot of body fat. 
That's not always necessarily the case. Another reason people tend to use ketogenic diets is because of rapid weight loss. And that's because at the start of a ketogenic diet, people tend to lose a lot of body weight quickly. The only thing is most of that body weight, at least initially, is not body fat. It's actually body water. Think of it like this. In our muscles, we can store some carbohydrates. We can actually store up to 500 grams of carbohydrates in the form of glycogen. And each gram of carbohydrates can hold on to up to four grams of water. So if you've got 500 grams of carbohydrates in your muscles, that means you're also holding on to almost two kilograms of water in your body. So if you reduce the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating, you may reduce some of the carbohydrate in your muscles, and then you lose a lot of water from your muscles too. That also means that your muscles can look less full on a ketogenic diet just because you don't have as much carbohydrates you don't have as much water filling the muscles and sometimes if you take a dexa a body composition assessment it can say that you've actually lost muscle on a ketogenic diet so that's something worth thinking about now you absolutely can lose body fat on a ketogenic diet but there's no major secret as to why the reason for losing weight on a ketogenic diet is, drum roll please, calorie deficit. You see, when people go on a ketogenic diet, they automatically eliminate a huge amount of other foods from the diet, especially convenience foods. Think of the burger and chips example I gave earlier. If you are on a keto diet, you can't have your chips, you can't have your bread, can't have pasta, can't have rice, can't have sugar. All of those things are gone from your diet. That's called spontaneous calorie reduction, and it works. And it's one of the reasons why keto diets can be really effective for losing body fat. But you probably want to know, is there some sort of special magic keto effect from just going on a keto diet? And the answer is no, but there is one advantage that a keto diet might have, and that's appetite. You see, when somebody goes on a ketogenic diet, when they're in ketosis, it seems that ketones can actually help to reduce somebody's appetite. Why is that important? Well, if you can control your appetite, there's a good chance that you'll be better able to stick to a diet long-term. And if you can stick to a diet long-term, you can lose weight. And that's where keto diets might have an advantage for some people. Now, there are some people who think that keto diets offer a metabolic advantage. Uh, where they think that it can actually speed up our metabolism and help us burn more calories. But the only evidence that we have about any metabolic ad advantage seems to be for a really, really small amount. So in practical terms, you're not going to be burning a huge amount of extra body fat with a keto diet. Remember, it all comes down to how many calories you eat. Another thing you might have heard about keto diets is that you need to eat fat to burn fat. Now, to a certain extent, that is kind of true. If you eat more fat, you're going to burn more fat. But the thing is, you're going to be burning the fat that you're eating, not the body fat on your body. So if you eat a lot of extra fat, any extra calories that you consume as fat are going to get stored on your body. You're not going to be burning your body fat at all. So again, calories matter even on a ketogenic diet. And what about ketone supplements, otherwise known as exogenous ketones. Well, these are really, really popular right now and they're often marketed as a fat loss supplement. People thinking that if you can artificially increase the ketones in your blood, you're going to be burning more fat. It's just not true. And in fact, some of the most recent research on some of the most expensive ketone supplements on the market has shown that even after a month of taking them in high doses, they have absolutely no effect on body fat. You do not lose weight with these supplements. If you go to the gym and lift weights, you'll also be really, really glad to know that being in ketosis is probably not going to affect your performance. Now, if you do some really, really high intensity activity, something like sprints, there is a chance that it might affect how you work out. But if you're a regular gym goer, I would say no problem at all doing a ketogenic diet. On the other hand, if you're a competitive athlete and really, really high performance is what you're after, it might be worth thinking twice before going on a ketogenic diet. Another thing worth remembering is that when people start a ketogenic diet, they often go through a period of a few days or even a few weeks where they feel really, really tired and lethargic. Now that usually clears up, but you need to stick with it for a while. So you may feel crappy at first, 
but uh, if you plow through it, you'll be okay. Another really important point to cover is whether a keto diet is healthy or not. Now, this is a really, really complicated issue. So if we look at a lot of studies that look at the health effects of ketogenic diets, and if we look at meta-analyses, and that's a combination of the results of a lot of studies combined together, what we see is that ketogenic diets can help people to reduce their blood glucose, which is good. It can help them to reduce their triglycerides, also good, and increase their HDL or good cholesterol. Now, the problem is that a lot of ketogenic diets also seem to raise LDL or bad cholesterol. And that's a problem because if you have high LDL cholesterol levels for a long time, it can help contribute to heart disease. That is not good. The reason that ketogenic diets seem to raise cholesterol is because many keto diets seem to be high in foods like fatty meats, processed meats, butter, uh, cheese. All of these are high in saturated fats and saturated fat causes high cholesterol levels. But there is some good news. It seems that people who follow a healthier form of a ketogenic diet, so that's a ketogenic diet that's high in unsaturated fats like olive oil and is also high in non-starchy salad vegetables, uh, can actually reduce their LDL cholesterol. So remember, while calories matter for weight loss, food quality really, really matters for health. So should you try keto? Well, it's up to you. Give it a try and see how it goes for you. That's the only way you'll find out if it works. If it's something that you enjoy and it's something you feel you can stick with, amazing. There are a lot of people who can get a lot of weight loss success on a ketogenic diet. But if you're somebody who absolutely loves carbs, maybe a keto diet isn't for you. And that's okay. You don't need keto for weight loss. You can absolutely lose weight following any amount of different types of diets as long as you're able to stay in a calorie deficit for long enough. Remember, the trick is to find a diet that you enjoy doing and something that you can stick with long term. So did that answer your questions about ketosis? If you have any questions at all, put them down here in the comments. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel and stay tuned for even more great evidence-based nutrition information. See you later guys.